That's it. Thank you, Arlene. Um, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Aberdeen City Council's Licensing Board on Tuesday, the 28th of July at 10.30. Please note that the public section of the meeting will be recorded and published online for public access after the meeting. Does anybody object? No. OK, thank you. Um, can all attendees switch off their camera and mute their microphones when not speaking? The camera and microphone should only be switched on when you're invited to speak. Guidance on how to do this is contained with the guidance issued to you. I will now ask the clerk to advise the members participating in today's meeting for the members to confirm their attendance once their name has been called. And the clerk will make sure this is clear for the recording and the clerk will take a, a note for the minute. Um, can I hand over you to Mr Munro? Thank you, convener. Yep. Um, so I'll just run through the list and, and obviously um, if you can confirm your attendance, please, at, at today's meeting. So convener. Here. Councillor Cameron. Here. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dunbar sent her apologies. Um, Councillor Grant, I don't think is with us. No. Councillor Greg. Present. Thank you. Councillor McKenzie. Here. Thank you. Councillor McClellan. Thank you. And Councillor Townsend. Here. Thank you. Um, welcome, uh, Councillor McKenzie, to your first licensing board. I believe you uh, passed the, the, the training with flying colours, so welcome today. Just so that everybody's um, of okay, we, we the item 2.12, the application for a provisional premises licence, the co-op One Mount Hooley Way Aberdeen has been deferred at the request of the applicant. Now, if we could just move on to the agenda proper. We have the minutes at pages 3 to 10 of the meeting of the 28th of January. Um, can I just take that as an accurate record of the meeting? Thank you. OK, if we can move on to the list of applications starting at page 11 and item 2.1. Mr. Sorry, Monroe. Councillor uh -huh. Cameron has his hand up. Oh, sorry, Councillor <laughs> Cameron, apologies. Not at all. <clears throat> Thank you, convener. It was in just before we get started, it, uh -huh. there are a number of, of applicants today, applications today with no objections and virtually no information, very little information. <clears throat> and over the period of time during the lockdown, there have a lot there has been a lot of uh, applicants for occasional licenses that have been dealt with under delegated authority. And I, I just wanted a little bit of clarity. Uh, because of a, a news story this morning related to Edinburgh. Um, there is an area in Edinburgh where the residents are considering quite seriously uh, taking legal action against the council for some of the uh, changes that have been made under the Places for People. Mm -hmm. Now, without getting into any of the details, and I really want to keep it very specifically to licensing, yeah. uh, there have been lots of objections in Aberdeen from individuals and from groups. Um, and I, I suppose what I wanted was absolute uh, clarity on any of the licensing occasional, sorry, I'll start again, any of the licensing agreements for um, temporary use of spaces under the places for people were they all done as occasionals as opposed to a variation? And if I could explain why I was ask, I'm asking this, if it's done under an occasional, if at some point in the future people we wanted to, or individuals wanted to make this a permanent feature and part of their licensed premises, like Alexander Simpson's and Brewdog and Union Street, then they would still have to come back to the licensing board. If any of these have been granted as variations, I would be, to say the least, unhappy. And it was just for clarity in that convener. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you, Councillor Cameron. And I think you will get comfort from Mr Munro that they are all just occasionals and that they would have to come back. Mr Munro, could you just clarify? Um, yes, um, j just by way of housekeeping, actually, before that, I see Councillor Grant's joined us. So, Councillor Grant, can I just ask you to confirm your attendance for the record, please? <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, apologies for being late. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> um, yes, sorry. The short answer to Councillor Cameron's question is, is yes, the, these have all been dealt with um, by um, occasional licence. Um, and in fact, one of the applications before us today for Ochmel Golf Club 
um, they're adding their beer garden um, and, and that's why it's before you. Um, we are not able to grant those kind of major variations under delegated powers. They all have to come to the board. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Cameron. Councillor McClellan. Uh, thank you, uh, convener. Um, can I also just start by um, thanking uh, Mr. Monroe and officers for their for the work they've done over the last couple of months in terms of licensing. There's obviously been a lot of uh, work being put in to get things uh, through in terms of the occasional licenses that have been granted. But um, I was wondering, um, and obviously this is slightly different from a usual committee, but would we be able to ask for a report to come back to the board um, on perhaps any recommendations um, or suggestions that um, officers have, and also stakeholders like of Inspired and other businesses and in the city around what uh, measures that are currently in place in a temporary measure uh, they might like to see become permanent measures. Um, obviously businesses will have invested in infrastructure and the like. Um, well, to, to what I would say, that. yeah, what I would say Councillor McClellan, and I think it probably pertains to the answer that Councillor Cameron got, that any ch permanent changes would have to come back as a variation. So it's not really for Aberdeen and Inspire to say what they would like. I mean, they can make representations to any application, but it would be up to the premise themselves to come back with a variation which would come before the board. Um, and consideration would be given in the normal way, because what we have to make sure that this, as, as Councillor Cameron quite rightly pointed out, many of these things that have been granted for occasional licences have been done under delegated powers because they are of a temporary nature. So any permanent variation would have to come and come forward from the applicant themselves. So the procedures are in place. Um, I think what we could do is once we maybe get um, a bit further down the road is we'll bring back and maybe it'll be part of our um, report next year is all the occasional license because you see we've got one on it this year for our functions of the board um, but I, it wouldn't be appropriate for us to be making recommendations on occasionals being becoming permanent or otherwise that would definitely have to come back from the applicant themselves and the board would consider it um, as that. they've done. Uh -huh. Can I come back in? Yeah it was obviously yeah, to sure. consult with four recommendations, um, opposed to us make recommendations. Um, I think that my point was more around the fact that some of the, um, the variations that are granted are um, require certain planning restrictions, the likes of closing Belmont Street to there for facility outside uh, drinking. Uh, so it was about consulting well, on what not, we yeah. like to see. Obviously, that's a planning aspect, but it would be yeah. interesting to see what in terms people would like in terms of licensing, um, and if that's something we could look at. Um, well, I don't know if that, as I say, just going back to, you have to be careful we're not conflating different things here. Mr. Munro, could I maybe bring you in at this point? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, it, 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 it's difficult in the sense that even though a lot of these things have been granted under delegated powers, they, they have still been done so because they comply with the board's policy statement. Um, I think what you're talking about, Councillor McClellan, is, is almost like, a, you know, looking to see if there's anything that can be added or, or removed from the, the, the policy statement. Um, if, the, if there's anything absolutely urgent, then then that could possibly be looked at. But I would maybe suggest that the time for that is, is when we go into our next um, policy review. Um, but but certainly we've worked closely with the, the planning department building standards um, because what we've been, and, and this possibly um, it touches on Councillor Cameron's point as well, um, what we've been keen to, to avoid is, is, is technically we should have been granting occasional licences if there are no licensing grounds for refusal. Um, but that would mean, and the, the, the likes of the example we just gave about Belmont Street, if there's a planning restriction preventing it, what we're then faced with is we are granting a license and then the planning department are coming along and telling them they can't use that license and, and we're, we're keen to try and avoid that scenario so we've been trying to work proactively with the other departments to get those issues resolved before we grant any licenses so i think what has come out of this is is that um i can see us having a closer working relationship with those other departments um with a view to almost continuing that that kind of um, ethos going forward. So so hopefully we can resolve most of the issues prior to the, the, the licenses being being issued or granted. Uh, Councillor McClendon, you want to come back? Yeah, thank you, Convener. Uh, just to thank Mr. Monroe for that. I think that, that does um, address the points that I'd raised. Thank you for that. Uh, 
OK, thanks, Councillor McClelland. Um, right, any other points before we go into the agenda? No. Could you pop your hand down, Councillor McClelland? OK, perfect, thank you. Right, moving on to the applications. I say 2.1 is an application for a variation premises licence to Ockmill Golf Club. Mr Munro. Thank you, convener. Yes, th this is one that, that um, we're talking. You'll see the, the um, application is for the addition of off sales and, and the addition of the beer garden for which they currently have an occasional license, but they are one who want to add that to the the, the, the license premises. Um, you'll see that they've agreed to the usual um, external drinking area conditions that, that we add to premises. So that's barriered off, uh, no amplified music um, and terminal hour of 10 p.m. Um, so there are Everything is within policy and there have been no objections or representations with this one. OK, with that in mind, members, are we happy to agree the, app the application? Councillor Cameron. Thank you, convener. Um, it was really a, a general thing as well. Obviously, when we're doing this uh, virtually, we don't get the opportunity to see plans. So and, and, I, I, and I do trust our officers. But this could be a huge area or it could be a very small area. And and generally for a lot of the applicants today, we're not seeing exactly what they want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I find that whilst there are no objections, I find that just a, a little bit um, difficult to deal with. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's just a point I wanted to make about, about the, the agenda in general. Um, because we've gone to a situation, <clears throat> excuse me, which works really well most of the time, where yeah. if there are no objections, we get very little information. If there are objections, then we get, I wouldn't go as far as to say information overload, Mr Monroe, that would be unfair. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly more than enough information to be able to, to make a, a sensible decision on the application. Uh, and it was really just a general point, but I mean, it's been covered under occasionals and, and uh, I, I certainly don't have any objection to granting that. Thank you. Mr. Root, do you want to just say anything on that point? Just to... Yeah, no, no um, we'll, 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 we'll take a look at that, certainly. Um, certainly, if, if we're not printing them out, um, it, it should be easy enough to add the likes of, of layout plans or something to, to agendas um, in, if, if they're, they're, they're being delivered electronically. So, so my apologies for that. Um, just by way of this one, is, is, is a, a, an external layer that's covered by a beer garden. It's um, I think it's got a capacity of 40, all seated. Um, and it's a private members club. Um, so, um, uh, yes, my apologies for, for not providing that. We'll, we'll look into that and, and make sure that the um, enough information, but not too much, is, is, is provided in, in, in the future. Yeah. If I could come I mean, back, convene on this, there's absolutely no need to apologise, Mr Monroe. <laughs> it was just a general comment. Uh, normally, the plans would be there in the room for us to look at. Uh, yeah. It's just, you know, and you know, hopefully this may well, well, it might not be the last virtual one. There might be another one before we go back to, to meeting in the, in the chamber. Um, but yeah, it, it was just a general comment, but absolutely no need to apologise, Mr. Mundro. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Cameron. And again, what, certainly what we've done in planning is we've actually just used a shared screen. So sorry, we can maybe get Mr. Munro to get them uh, and he can share it on the screen and we can all look at it uh, <laughs> together. <laughs> maybe it's a step too far, is it? Yeah, maybe. Me, me. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, Clarence McClellan, you take your hand down, so I'm assuming it was the same point. Yeah. Yes, sorry, it was the same point. Happy to OK, thank you. There. OK, so with that, uh, can we agree the application for the variation? Agreed? OK, Agreed. thank you. Right, moving on to 2.2, sorry, the application for a variation to premises licence at the co-op. Uh, Mr Monroe. Thank you. Yeah, I'll possibly deal with the next two um, in, in, at the same time, um, if that's yeah. OK. Convenient. They're, they're, they're pretty much identical. Um, <clears throat> just by way of a wee bit of background to this, there, there was a question mark um, when um, lockdown occurred as to whether or not an off-sale premises could do deliveries of alcohol 
um, without it being specifically mentioned in their operating plan. Um, we took the view that as they had off sales on their license, they, they could do that, but we would prefer it to be in the operating plan in due course. Um, so this is the co-op simply just, just doing that. They're adding um, deliveries into um, their, their operating plan for their premises at Scotston Road and, and Union Street. Um, you'll see on both that they've agreed our usual delivery conditions um, uh, with that. So um, again, they're both within policy and um, there have been no objections or representations with these ones. Thank you very much, Mr Munro. Um, any questions or are we content with the explanation by Mr Munro for the variations at 2.2 and 2.3? Do we agree? Uh, convener, I could put my yet. hand up. The, the, this hand thing's not working very well. Don't but, and, and and my mod gov, gov keeps dropping out every time I come back here. But on this particular, that's my problem to solve as we go along today. Um, I th this idea of home deliveries and selling alcohol. When we were, there's one later I'll deal with when we get to it, but for, but for the retail stores at the moment, when we've been doing this in the past with takeaways, that there are very simple rules that can be put in place in relation to times that this can happen and so on. People are ordering in advance for home deliveries from supermarkets, especially just now, and especially with, with shielding people. How can we be sure if we grant these licenses to allow them to do this, that that alcohol will not be delivered outside of licensing hours? Or alternatively, how can we be sure it was ordered within licensing hours? Because certainly we had lots of debate on this with yeah. takeaway restaurants. I, and I remember, I, certainly on one occasion, and I can't remember which one it was, there was debate over as long it was, as it was ordered during licensing hours, if it was delivered later than licensing hours, that was going to be OK. And I'd just like a little bit of clarity on this with these, um, these, these two applications in particular. Mr. McGrath? Yeah, thank you, convener. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, online deliveries for for supermarkets is is not a new thing. Um, I, I suspect most of them already have it in in their license. Um, there are actually restrictions in the the act as as to when alcohol can be delivered. Um, so delivery out with that is 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 an an, an offence. So so they have to abide by 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 that. Um, in terms of what guarantees we have, I mean, obviously, we, the the conditions that we add are, are, are things like making sure it doesn't deliver to children, etc., and getting a signature and, and, and what have you. So um, we, we've added what safeguards, if you like, um, we feel we can in terms of the legislation. Um, on, on top of that, I guess, it is... We're, we're, we're having to take on face value that premises are going to abide by the law, to be honest, um, because as I said, there, there are specifics as to when deliveries can be made within within the Act itself. Uh, thank okay. you, Sandy and, and convener. No, I'm, I'm happy with that. Thank you. OK. Um, any other questions? No? OK. Uh, with that in mind, are we content to approve their variation at 2.2 and 2.3? Great. OK, I'll take silence as agreement. <laughs> OK, thank you. We're moving on to 2.4, which is an application for variation of premises license at Dobry Express. And so, um, sorry, Mr. Munro. Yes, thank you, convener. Um, this one again is um, a change of capacity. Um, they've basically, I think, um, acquired the adjoining premises, so they've changed the layout. Um, again, I appreciate this would be one that, that would be handy to have the, the, the plan attached. So um, again, even though it's not required, my apologies for that. Um, again, um, uh, there have been um, no objections or representations, and it is within um, a, a policy. I say it, it's more a change of layout um, with the resulting um, slightly um, increase in capacity as a result. Any questions for Mr Munro? No? OK, again, are we content to approve the application for the variation? Excellent, thank you. Uh, 2.5 is an application for variation of a premises license at Moonfish Cafe, Mr Munro. 
Thank you, convener. Yep, um, you see those quite a lot on, on this one. Um, they have included um, off sales onto the license, which they didn't previously have. Um, th this was one which, which temporarily obtained a, an occasional license to do off sales in an unlicensed part of the premises. Um, but that that that's they, they, they've now incorporated that into the, the, the main license to, to clear that. They've added a number of activities to, to allow them um, a little bit of flexibility in their operation, I think. Um, a sign of the times as much as anything else. Um, again, they, they've added deliveries um, and um, given that this is an on and off sales premises, they, they've agreed to do the usual delivery conditions, um, no alcohol delivery without food, etc. Um, the usual um, checks on um, delivery uh, drivers and what have you. Um, and again, um, everything's within policy and, and there's no objections or representations for this one. OK, thanks for McLellan. Uh, thank you. It was just with regards to the bit of the description around the um, local beverage uh, order of minimum £15. Um, is it really necessary that that's included? To perhaps tie in their hands for future? You know, it's it's a wheel. So my apologies, Councillor. That that was them that put that in. That's that's not us. Yeah. That's that's their choice. Um, we we've just included that for, for information because that's what they've applied for. We we have not held them to that. Um, that that's their operating method. It's it's right. it's not anything the board have 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 imposed upon them. Yeah. No. I, no. I appreciate that. Um, I just thought that keeping it in was perhaps overly restrictive. But that's but what, they that's what they've applied for. I appreciate that, and and I I would. Agree possibly agree, but that's what they've applied for to go into their license. So the fact that we don't think it's necessary doesn't mean that we should be taking it out, in my opinion. That that's what they've applied for. So it's it's the board's um remit is, is to grant or refuse the application yeah, really. Yeah. So <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Okay. Councillor Cameron, did you I know you did have your hand up but it's gone down so you don't want to speak it it the was point. the same point as Councillor McClellan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. OK, um, with all that heard, are we agreed to that we can approve the application for the variation at Moonfish Cafe? Agreed. Excellent. Moving swiftly on to 2.6, which is the application for a variation premises license at Boldino's restaurant. Mr Munro. Uh, thank you, Kandina. Um, yep, again, a few things in this one. Just to, uh, I, I, again, um, I, I do know this one as a sign of the times because they've said that themselves. So they've added excuse me, on sale hours on a Sunday. Um, they've, they've varied their general on sale hours as well and um, added off sales. Um, they've also added a, a number of activities to include receptions, meetings and, and background recorded music. And um, they've amended the times for children and young persons access. Um, again, they've agreed to our standard uh, delivery conditions. They have um, all the, the um, excuse me, the, the variations are, are within policy. Um, and again, there has been no objections or representations with this one. Thanks. Um, Councillor Greg, your hand. Yes, thank you, convener. Um, could I ask if there's more information available on that final proposal on amendment to, to the Times for children and, and young persons? It, it seems very, very general. Is, is there more information on that? Um, yes. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay. Um, yes, Ms. is your hand going to meant to be up or is it going down? Thank you. We'll just give us a moment. I mean, it's really to find out if this is a, a significant change that they're that they're proposing. Um, just for clarity there. Um, so uh, I, what what I've got is, um, sorry, uh, right. What I've got is children are only allowed entry if accompanied by an adult. Young persons will be allowed entry at the premises manager's discretion. Um, children of all age, children and young persons of all ages will be allowed. Um, children and young persons will be allowed entry at all times the premises is open. 
and children and young persons will be allowed entry to all public parts of the premises. Uh, that, that's the amended. Uh, I don't have the initial ones. I don't know what the changes are, but, but that's the, the, the amended one. Um, and with their operating hours, I think the, the, the latest the premises open is, uh, is 1 a.m. Um, but it is a restaurant, it's not a bar. So both the police and the LSO thought that that well, that was um, OK, basically. Yeah, that, that was going to be that was going to be my next question. What what, what was the feedback for from the um, LSOs and the and the police? But they they've come back with no with no comment or with positive Correct. comment. Yes, yes, that that's they, yeah. they were happy enough with with the application. There was there right. was no objection or representation okay, received. Thank on. you. Thanks. And and uh, OK, any other questions now? OK, with that in mind, are we happy to um, approve the variation to the application for Paul Dino's? Agreed? OK, thank you. Moving on to 2.7, which is an application for a variation of premises license at River Duck, which is an interesting name. <laughs> Mr Munro. Thank you, um, convener. Um, this is another change to um, Children and Young Persons Access. Um, we, we do have the change here. So previously they were allowed entry from ages 5 to 17 um, and they've just changed that to allow basically 0 to 17 so that um, I, I guess it avoids the situation of a um, parent with a very young child not being able to enter the premises. So um, that that's basically the, the extent of the, the, the change um, and, and again there's been no objections or representations to that one. Councillor McClellan. Councillor McClellan. Oh yes, sorry. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying should it not be broken down into children and young people just in terms of being accurate in terms of what that are and being in the be young people, not children. Apologies, yes, that will be in the, the, the license, yes. Um, to, to be perfectly honest, the, the, the change is allowing zero to five add, to be added to the license. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't affect the change, but yes, young persons are 16 and 17 and um, children are zero to 15, so yeah. Grant, thank you. Okay, okay, with that in mind, can we approve the variation? Great. Okay, thanks. Councillor McClellan, do you pop your hand down? <laughs> thank you. Um, next one is 2.8, which is an application for a variation of premises license at the Sandman Signature Hotel. Mr. Munro. Thank you. Yeah, that, that seems to a lot where we should have included plans this, this time. That, that That's just my luck, I think. So um, <laughs> I, again, apologies that those are not um, in, included. Um, you you recall that the Sandman was, was being kind of done in, in phases. Um, so this variation is simply to incorporate um, the additional bedrooms in phase two uh, into the license, which allows them to do room service and things like that. So um, again, um, this, this was uh, within policy and again, there was no objections or representations received during the consultation. Thank you, Mr Munro. I don't see any hands. So can I, we approve the application for the variation at Sandman? Great. OK, thank you. Moving on to 2.9, which is an application for a variation of premises license at Siberia. Mr Munro. Almost the exact same. They, <laughs> I believe they've acquired the neighbouring hotel. Um, so again, apologies, the, the, the plans aren't uh, on the, the, um, the agenda. Um, the, uh, they're basically adding that hotel to the, the, the license and it's becoming Siberia Hotel and Bar as, as opposed to just Bar. Um, uh, and again, um, it's within policy and there are no objections or representations for that one. Okay. Any questions? I don't see it. Oh, Councillor McClellan. Yeah, so just to be clear, there is no outdoor area being extended then. Sorry, Councillor McClellan, can you speak a bit closer to the mic? Because you're a little bit Apologies, difficult. Apologies, can you? And um, it's just to be clear that then that's not taking into account any of our temporary stuff, currently got temporary story. It is not, no. Um, it is just the additional hotel at this point. Okay, brilliant, thanks. Thanks, Councillor McLean. Okay, with that in mind, can we approve the variation for Siberia? Agreed, thank you. Right, moving on to 2.10, which is an application for a variation of premises license at Tony Macaroni, Mr Monroe. Thank you, convener. Um, yes, this one, um, they, they've um, varied their uh, on and off sale hours slightly um, and they have added, this, this is one where they're adding their, their external area to the licence. 
Um, uh, again, they have agreed to delivery conditions. They have agreed to external area conditions. Um, again, it's it's within policy. Um, and again, it all obviously there's an increase in capacity as a result of the, the external area. And um, there have been no objections or representations to this one either. Mr. Monroe, can I just ask if everybody's want a question? Can I just ask how many tables they're proposing for the external area? Yeah, give me a second. I believe the capacity is 24, but I will just double check. Okay. Six tables. Um, right, let me see. Because I think they have had an occasional. Yes. Yeah. Um, So it looks like they have um, one, two, three, four, five, six tables of four seats. So yeah, that would be the 24. So yes. OK, that's super. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cameron. Thank you, convener. Uh, it's, it's really a sort of extension of the question you've just asked. Presumably with social distancing, this occupies a considerable area. Uh, just to be sure that the area covered is in the, if all the temporary um, restrictions on Upper Kirgate were to be removed, that we would not be in a situation where we are granting a variation which would have an excessive area of the pedestrian way occupied under this, this licence. And presumably, if, if we go back to the social distancing issue, the 24 and 6 tables um, if we agree that cartilage, if social distancing were to disagree, uh, sorry, to disappear, would they then be in a position to have more tables there? Uh, so, you know, what are we agreeing to? 24 tables or the, the area of pavement? Sorry, 24 people <laughs> or, the, or the area of pavement or are we agreeing to both? Yes and no. <laughs> um, technically, what we're agreeing to is is the licensed area, um, so it's it's the footprint. Um, however, they have a capacity in the license now of twenty four for that area. So if things change and and they wanted to fit more tables in, they would have to come back to the board for a, a variation to increase the capacity of that area. Um, so whilst technically the answer is it's it's simply the footprint that that we're granting. Because they've, they've provided the capacity of 24, if they wanted to increase that, that would be another variation that would have to come back to yourselves because it's a major variation. OK, that that does answer my question, but, I, but I've now got a supplementary. How <laughs> big is that area? <clears throat> <clears throat> and how much does that impinge on what is the permanent pedestrian walking area? Sorry, give me two seconds. No, it's probably an unfair question, Mr. <laughs> Monroe. It, it, but, but, but you know, I'm just trying to make a point uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. that um, we have to, in order to get a certain number in just now because of the the social distancing guidelines, uh, <clears throat> we are probably agreeing to a bigger area than if they had come along wanting 24 people in an area previously. So I, I suppose what I want is a, is comfort that the area we are allocating to this and we're quite happy to have as cartilage for Tony Macaroni or any other applicant is not excessive in normal times for what is the permanent pedestrian areas. OK, I'll just see if this works. Can you see my screen? I, uh, no, not yet. No. Yes. Can you see it? Oh, no. Okay. Um, right, let me see if I can get. Of course, there's also the license to occupy, which would need to be issued by the council, which is a different. And then there potentially is planning, because if you remember the Rujog scenario, 
where we had planning and licensing involved. Um, so we can we can let them sell alcohol, but they need to, they might have to have planning to be able to have the tea. Okay. Can you see? Yes. That? No. Yep. Okay. So yeah, this area nice. here on the left hand side is the the six tables you'll see there, and the red line is the the the, the total licensed area. Um, and in terms of the social distancing, it's a bit bizarre in that the LSOs or, or us in licensing don't really have any jurisdiction over that. It would be environmental health, etc. So, so what we are really uh, approving is is the licensed area. Um, and as I said, they, they, they've decided to apply for a capacity of 24. Uh, and if they wanted to fit any more in that area, then they would require um, a, a, a and another variation. Um, my understanding is that area has been approved by um, roads, etc., and and um, will I presume will be kept under review for that. Um, it, the, they've relaxed the pavement permits at the moment, but if they, they would require one, then I, I know that the the applicant's agent has been in touch with roads over this one. So um, I, I think, as far as I'm aware, that that that's not an issue from their side of things. OK, thank you, Mr. Mundo. I, I'm, I'm quite happy now. I, I just wanted to make the point because it's um, we're living in strange times. <laughs> and uh, uh, I know at the moment that Upper Kirkgate is, is more, it has traffic there, but it's more pedestrianised than it was. <clears throat> OK, thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Cameron. Councillor McClellan? Uh, yeah, thank you. That I think um, Mr. Mundo's clarified the points I was going to ask. Um, just to clarify, though, in terms of the diagram, that is Upper Kirkgate, it's not Clermont Lane that the seat is going to be on, yeah? Yes, it was because the yeah. entrance was down the bottom left, yeah. yes. Brilliant. Yep, yeah, no, no, no further questions. Yeah. Okay, can I, I just ask one question, um, Mr Munro? Obviously, ours is about the safety of provision of alcohol, and I'm assuming that, you know, we, that there is a slight, uh, sort of almost like a walkway between the tables and the red line. I'm assuming that's how they'll deliver the alcohol and it'll be table service. That's my understanding, yes. OK, that's fine. Um, any other questions? No? OK, are we happy to approve the variation for uh, 20 macaronis? Agreed. Excellent, thank you. Right, moving on to 2.11, which is an application for a variation of premises license at Woodside Post Office. Mr Monroe. Thank you. Yep, um, this this is again simply a, a change of layout um, at the premises, um, which has resulted in a slight increase in um, the alcohol capacity. Um, again, it's within policy and there have been no objections or representations for that one. OK, um, we've got uh, Councillor Cameron, Councillor Greg and Councillor McLeod, your hand's still up from last time. <laughs> Councillor Cameron. <clears throat> Thank you, convener. Um, unless the figures are incorrect, it's a threefold increase in capacity. Okay. <laughs> uh, which seems somewhat excessive. It goes from four to thirteen point two, I think. As I say, my my mod.gov keeps dropping out. Uh, yeah, from four square meters to thirteen point six six square meters. That seems a huge increase. I wonder if it's one of these things, you know, that's got four way round sides as opposed to a, a single. Maybe Mr. Munro can look at the diagram. I'm just trying to get up. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> While well, Mr Munro is looking at it, it's, I, I was actually surprised not to see an objection from NHS Grampian on this one. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, right, I'll try this again. Bring this up. Sorry, bear with me. Okay. There's probably a quicker way of doing this, but it's been no, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say, from looking at the plan, it doesn't look massive, so I don't know if they had a very small area to begin with um, in terms of the overall layout. So, 
Um, is, is the plan coming up? Yes, it is. Thank you. So the, the red hatched areas is, is the new customer accessible area and, and the one behind the, the, the person there is the um, inaccessible to um, the, the, the public. Um, so it's it's these shelves along the, the back corner here. I, I must admit I don't have access to the previous one, but, but I am assuming that the previous one is um, possibly it was it was quite small. Quite interesting. We've got it right by the door. Yeah, so Cameron, do you? Like yeah, I mean, I, 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 I suppose my comments were, <clears throat> excuse me, related to the increase. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it's apart from the fact that it seemed quite close to the door. Thirteen square meters in in a shop of that size is not excessive, but it's a huge increase, and that was yeah. that was really my my concern. Um, Is there anything else you'd like to ask about it at the moment? No. Okay. All right. I would leave it up at the moment, Mr. Monroe, and yep, I'm Councillor, you. <laughs> Councillor Greg. Thank you. Um, I wanted to make the same point, um, uh, and, and also I'm, I am surprised that there is no representation from NHS Grampian. Um, Woods, the Woodside area is one of our regeneration areas um, and there are um, there are statistics on safety uh, and so forth um, in that location so um, yeah I, I have I have quite considerable concerns about such a such a huge increase um, yeah we, we haven't had yeah, I mean, we haven't obviously had any observations from the police either, even on the safety. You know, if it, um, so the, the, there has been no representations from our statutory consultees. Um, Mr. Monroe, is there anything you can add? Um, I don't know. No, not really. As I said, I appreciate um, the, the 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 points raised um, because on on paper it does look like a massive increase. Um, but I guess the only point I'd make to that is that depends on what you start with. Um, um, because as I said, from looking at it there, it it doesn't look massively excessive given the the size of the the, the premises. And obviously that's what's in our policy statement that mm -hmm. we want it to be proportionate to the 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 premises so um whilst i appreciate that, that yes on paper it does look like a massive increase um and I, I think the fact that as you've said neither the police nor the lso nor the nhs have have um expressed any concerns with it um then um i i think it is what it is to be perfectly honest yeah, yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you know, we we don't have anybody here from the the um, post office because we weren't we had no um, objections. Yeah. Um, Councillor Cameron or Councillor Greg, obviously, is there is there any other questions? I mean, I don't think there's anything else Mr. Monroe can really say. We haven't got any um, see objections from statutory consultees to be able to ask questions of. So, are you content with to? And, and that's not the same as happy, but content with the application to approve the variation, or are you considering moving something different? Um, could could I come in? Um, yes, I think it, I, th I think it is. Um, it is a pity that we don't have um, police or LSO representation here, um, and I would prefer to have more information before before proceeding with this one. Um, on the grounds that it is uh, a major change um, and I would welcome the reassurances. It, it, it would give me comfort if I knew that um, our questions could be answered. I mean, I think they are reasonable uh, and, and, and I think it'd be useful just to have that, that further um, support. Okay. Um, maybe, rather, uh, rather than yeah. just the silence. Yeah, I, I mean, I think what we have to be careful is that we're not being seen to court an objection from our statutory mm. consultees because they've had that opportunity. Mr. Monroe, um, would you like to come in? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to put him on the spot, but Inspector Campbell is here from the police. We do have the police at, at, at the meeting. I don't know how much involvement he'll have had in the, the application, however. <laughs> 
is it is it possible to hear mr Campbell? From the police thank you can, uh, um, can you hear me yes we yes. can thank you um yeah i've had no involvement directly myself with this but i can see that uh, it has been looked at um and th there is no objection from us and they considered it as a suitable variation and they've made no comment regarding the variation proposed in regards to size or otherwise so that, other than that i can't really comment on it uh, at present okay thank you very much appreciate we were putting you on the spot a little bit but you know it, it, it is helpful that you have actually seen it and that it was determined that there wasn't any objection councillor greg does that give you any more comfort um yes it does actually um yeah, yeah i don't I, I don't think i would have um grounds for refusing or deferring um but but i'm glad that i've had the opportunity to to express those those yeah. those concerns um we, we can all, thank you we for can that ask the, the the lso's to monitor it as well councillor mm -hmm. just to make sure that it isn't an issue so that that's obviously within a remit as well well that would be appreciated thank you thanks for that. thank you councillor greg councillor cameron yeah i mean i i would agree with everything that councillor greg said and and yes if we could ask the lso's to monitor it that would be useful as well yep thank you all right, folks, with that in mind, um, we're content to um, approve the application for the variation at Woodside Post Office. OK, super. Right, that comes to the conclusion of the applications, or the most of them being variations. Um, we're now 2.12, as you'll remember, at the start of the meeting, I told us being deferred. So we're moving on to item three, which is the Chief Constable's annual report. So back to yourself. Uh, sorry, uh, was it Inspector? Am I seeing the right title? <laughs> yes, convener, it is indeed, Inspector. Um, <laughs> thank you. I don't intend to read the whole report, obviously. Yeah. Um, I would just highlight the, the main things. Obviously, the five policing priorities for Police Scotland is antisocial behaviour, violence and disorder, inquisitive crime, road safety and road crime, protecting people at risk of harm, serious organised crime, counter-terrorism, and domestic extremism. These obviously link in quite closely with the five licensing objectives. In regards to the statistics that we've got mentioned in the report, um, we've dealt with and responded to 405 applications for occasional licenses extended hours. Uh, that's an increase from 351 the previous year, so up 54. Um, there's 12 premises or provisional premises applications, which is an increase from seven the previous year, so that's up five. Uh, in regards to personal licences, there's 519 applications, an increase from 391 the previous year. This is reflected uh, with the 10-year renewal point, so that's what the major, main increase is there of 128. Uh, in regards to uh, premises or variations, there was 119, um, which, uh, which is premises or variations or premise license transfer applications. It's a slight reduction in them the previous year, down nine. In regards to inspections of licensed premises, there was 2,484 um, visits to licensed premises recorded on our innkeeper. That's a reduction in the previous year, which was previously 3,077. So that's down 593 visits. Mm -hmm. However, I see that as a, a positive as opposed to a negative. Uh, there's been less visits required. We're still meeting suitable standards in licensed premises, and it's a reflection of how the premises are being run in Aberdeen. Uh, if you look at the reported incidents mm -hmm. uh, in regards to premises in Aberdeen, it's down to about 687 uh, visits, uh, sorry, 687 reported visits to licensed premises, um, or incidents in licensed premises, sorry, which is a reduction of 88 incidents from the previous year, again, which would be reflected in the amount of visits that we've had to carry out. Uh, the previous year was 775. Uh, in regards to monitored premises, four have uh, had a period of monitoring and intervention by ourselves, uh, mainly due to management shortcomings following incidents. Uh, in the period, there were no premises license review applications submitted, and that's pretty much a summary of the, the report for Aberdeen City. 
OK, um, well, thank you very much for the report and it did make interesting reading and it was quite interesting. Obviously, the reduction in visits uh, correlating with the reductions in incidents, which is obviously good news for us as a city. Um, I'll take I, I know it's Councillor Greg. I think you've got some quite a question. Yes, thank you. It's on that page it, uh, and, and it's on that same theme. Uh, the reduction in inspections, uh, I mean, it looks like a good result. Um, well, first of all, uh, I wondered if there are any particular reasons for this um, behind this um, behind this drop, you know, in, in any particular um, trends that we're seeing. Uh, and secondly, I would... uh, and secondly, oh, um, are the inspection is is the area of the inspections um, changing at all? Are, I mean, are they, is 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 there a is there a more focused um, way of doing inspections so that they don't have to be you know, random and therefore there would be there would be fewer and you'd carry a, a more efficient regime of of monitoring. Uh, to answer the first part, uh, the drop is bound to, I would say, collaboration and working uh, practices of both licensees and police and the LSOs in the work that we do around mm -hmm. about licensed premises. There's a build-up of trust um, and they're not scared to implement uh, suggestions and practices that we're putting forward to them. So, I mean, from the incidents and premises, it's a good sign that there's a significant drop in them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's down to sort of that partnership working approach where we're working together to try and achieve uh, reduction in incidents in licensed premises. In regards to the area changing, uh, it's done through targeting from ourselves. If we identify issues that are becoming common in licensed premises, then we will um, direct our resources to these premises and try and assist them and uh, work with them to try and achieve a better standard, if you like. So from the area changing, there's no area changing. It's, it's basically down to uh, partnership working and just achieving what we're needing to achieve and directing our resources to appropriate areas. OK, th thank you for that. Um, I've been out with the police and LSOs on um, on these monitoring visits. Uh, and and there's real there's real um, positive. I mean, it, it, it's a really friendly partnership. Um, very very efficient. Um, very high quality um, standards of of care in following the licensing policies. But but there's also that really there's that really positive um, spirit of collaboration um, between the police and the the LSOs and the and the trade. You know, there's a there's a really good culture. Um, in place, which I've experienced. So, so thank you for, thank you for, um, for nurturing and furthering that. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Greg. I, just following on that point, I mean, obviously, when we did our new policy, one of the things that we put in, which again was a, definitely a co collaborative um, decision, was about the sort of vulnerable um, individuals and not making them. Um, if you like putting them out onto the streets and looking after them on the premises. How have you found that, you know, when you've been going in to do your visits? Yeah, as I just say, with, with the licensed premises, it, it takes a bit of time to get these focuses in place, but certainly there is, uh, in general, across the city, uh, an awareness by licensees and their staff about vulnerabilities of people and ensuring that they're safe and taken home. So there has been an increase in awareness and sort of facilitating that that uh, opportunity. So yeah, it has been a positive step. Yeah, because I mean, I know that we were obviously quite far down the road with the Ask Angela and One Punch um, um, initiatives. But, you know, I think it, it certainly was, a, I think, a, an important game changer that we, we made the premises realise that they couldn't just uh, evict somebody who was under the influence, that they had a sense of responsibility for them. So, you know, it's certainly a welcome um, change to the dynamics, I think, within the licensed trades, particularly the late night uh, trade, that they're working more collaboratively with 
I think all partners, that's ourselves, yourselves and the LSOs. So, you know, long may it continue. And I think the police have come a long way. I mean, I've been on the board now for many years, shall we say, um, and, and I've certainly seen a, a different dynamic appear. And it's rather, you know, before there, there certainly seemed to be a them and us, but I think it's certainly now, you know, one team coming together for the, the benefit of benefit of all. So, uh, you know, obviously I'd just like to pass on our thanks from the board uh, for all the work that the police do do um, sometimes in some vo sort of volatile situations. Has anybody got anything else they'd like to add um, or ask? No, I think, I think that's it. But no, I mean, thank you for the report and thank you for um, stepping in for Sergeant Flett today. If you could pass on our thanks to obviously Sergeant Flett, who is a stalwart of the board as well, um, you know, and her input is obviously valued. So thank you very much for the report and uh, let's look forward to another successful report next year. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, Governor. Hey, convener. OK, thank you. OK, folks, so if we could just uh, note that. So moving on to item four, which is the annual licensing board function report, Mr. Munro. Yeah, thank you, Kinga. Um, this is the, the, the yearly report, obviously, that, that, that comes to um, the board. Um, there's, there's not a lot of um, change from one from last year, to, to be perfectly honest. Um, most of the changes that, that we made, we made at the time of the, the policy statement. Um, and certainly um, I'm not aware of any of the applications since then have been granted out with policy. Um, obviously, before the abolition of the significant entertainment issue, etc., we, we had quite a few where we were granting them out with policy. but. Um, with the new policy statement, it, there, there, there's less reason for any applications to be granted out with policy, I would say, um, and, and that's reflected in the report. There, there, there just haven't really been um, any situations that, that have justified that, um, certainly to date. Uh, the lists there you'll see give an indication of, of um, the, the amount of work, obviously, that, that, that goes into um, a, a year. That there's a fair amount of premises, personal and occasionals. Um, uh, on uh, the, the the lists, uh, and as we discussed earlier, I suspect next year's list of occasions will be even larger following um, <laughs> this this year's fun and games. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it's just obviously to to get the um, board's approval of the report and 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 um, authorization to, to to publish that on on the website as we're required to do. Thank you very much, Mr. Munro. And I'd like to obviously, again, as convener of the licensing board, thank all the licensing board or licensing team who I know they don't just deal with the board. They've also got the committee to, to deal with, but for their dedication to making sure that we got a very successful, I believe, licensing board policy. Um, I think that we did one of the largest consultations we've ever done on the board's policy. We scrapped it and started right from you know, a blank sheet to make sure that we got something that I think was um, allowing for businesses to be entrepreneurial, but at the same time safeguarding the, the public and public health. So I think, again, you know, it, it's credit to all our, our consultees who participated in that and, and the members of the board. And I think it's testimony to the, the actual policy that we haven't actually granted and he had to go out with the, the licensing board statement. Um, so, you know, I'd like to thank all of you for your participation in that because it's, you know, it's not down to one person, it's down to our, our team effort. Um, and I, I think, you know, as I say, we, you know, we had a, a couple of little bumps in the road at the start, but I think it, it's it's beginning to prove itself that it was a, um, a flexible policy that is delivering for both the premises and for, for the citizens. Um, and I would just commend, obviously, the hard work of, of our officers to, to get us to where we are, because, you know, we are in a quite a, an emotive <laughs> subject um, and it's something it's under the spotlight, you know, alcohol um, abuse and all the other things to do with alcohol. But we recognise that it's not alcohol that's necessarily bad. It, it, it's sometimes about the relationships. And I think what we've tried to do is, is give a policy that allows us to produce a report like this that shows, I think, it, in a positive light. Would anybody else like to make any comment or anything? No? OK, we've got the recommendations just at two, which is to approve the annual function report and to authorise the clerk of the board to proceed with the publication of the annual functions report. So we can agree that. Excellent. Thank you, folks. Moving on to agenda item five, which is the um, sorry, Aberdeen Licensing Board financial report. Mr Monroe. 
Uh, thank you, convener. Yep. Um, the uh, again, uh, this is an annual report that requires to to be um, prepared and, and, and published. Um, the the figures themselves um, have not been published as yet. So so those were a private paper with the with the agenda. It's, it's a public item, but obviously until such times as the figures are approved, we weren't going to to, to release those um, into the public. You'll see. There is still a surplus, um, which which um, isn't ideal, but um, we have managed to bring that down a little bit from from last year. Um, I think last year was about 150, um, so we brought it down um, a little bit on there. Um, and, and we were obviously still working on that, and um, we'll have to examine the the, the fees etc. to make sure that, that that they're all still um, appropriate. Um, on that basis. Um, that there is something that the board might want to consider, and, and that's the the annual fees for premises. And um, we're due to send the reminders for those out at the end of next month. Um, obviously, um, and, and I'm thinking particularly of on sale premises here. They, they'll have gone a period of three, four months without having been able to operate. Um, the the Act provides a maximum figure for the annual fee based on the rateable value of, of premises. Um, so I, I would maybe suggest that something the board want to explore, maybe giving a, a reduction on annual fees for, for on sale premises this year to reflect the, the period of time that, that, that they've not been able to operate. But that's obviously something for yourselves to discuss. I've got very rough figures worked out to give um, an idea of what three quarters of the, the, the fee and, and two thirds of the fee would, would, would result in if, if that would be of, of, of use. Um, but obviously, it, it is whether you yourselves think that's worth exploring at this stage. OK, thanks, um, Mr Munro. I obviously have discussed this with Mr Munro because I'm very aware that um, our licensed premises, particularly, as Mr Munro said, the on sales um, have gone through a particularly difficult um, start to the financial year uh, with not being able to be open because of the COVID-19 situation. <laughs> um, and, you know, I felt it appropriate that we you know that we discuss it today and get your agreement to reduce the fees for this coming year um, to allow them to offset some of that loss against that fee. Now Mr Munro has prepared um, sort of two different variations that we could look at and as I say this is on on sales not off sales because they've obviously still been trading. So Mr Munro could you maybe just give us an indication of the, the, the two different figures and maybe I could ask the board uh, which one they'd be interested in pursuing, if any. Yeah, thank you, Kibir. As I said, just, just for um, uh, by, by uh, way of example, um, I, I've taken sort of three quarters and two thirds as as the kind of um, ballpark figures. So um, I, I've taken the, the, the list of premises from last year. Um, I would caveat it by saying we haven't yet checked the rateable values of the premises, so, so there might be some that change um, and, and there might be some that are different from last year. But as a very rough example, so to give you an idea of the, the fees themselves, um, as I said, there are there are six different categories depending on the rateable value. So the annual fee for, for category one is 180. Um, if that was three quarters, it would be 135. And if it was two thirds, it would be 120. Uh, we have 55 premises last year that would have fallen into, fallen into that category. Um, category two, the annual fee is 220. At three quarters, that's 165. And at two thirds, it's 147. Um, and we have 15 premises that fall into that category. Category three is 280, um, which is 210 at three quarters or 187 at two thirds. And we have 122 premises that fall into that category. Category four was a jump to 500. Um, three quarters of that is 375 uh, and two thirds is 334. Um, and we have 89 um, in, in that, that category. Category five, the annual fee is 700, um, three quarters is 525 and two thirds is 467. And we have 82 that fall into that. Uh, and the top category, the annual fee is 900. Um, three quarters of that would be 675 and two thirds would be 600. And, and we have 87 in those. Um, so if you take that into consideration, um, based on, as I said, last year's figures, um, the total amount that that would come in for annual fees is 227560 
if we did it at three quarters, um, that would drop to 176.70, which would be a drop of about 56,890. Uh, and if we did it at two thirds, the total that would come in would be 151.839. Um, and that drop would be about 75,721. Um, so you'll see in, in, in both cases, um, that figure could, is obviously less than the surplus that, that we have made this, this year. Um, so assuming everything else remains the same, then um, we should be able to absorb that without um, basically going into a deficit um, in, in terms of the, the board's operation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Windrow. Um, and that's assuming I can count. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Cameron. Thank you, convener. Uh, it was, I should know this, but I'm sure Ms. Lemonro knows it better than me. Since the lockdown on the 23rd of March, until the point where the on sales were allowed to function, what was the time period? They were all to open. Um, certainly outdoor areas uh, have been the 6th of July, I believe it was, was the, the, the first date that they could operate outdoor areas, which is obviously a, a reduced capacity. So you'd have what the end of March, April, the full April, full May, full June, and then the beginning of July. So maybe about three, just over three months, I would say. Um, and obviously the indoors was, uh, was it the 15th of July, I believe it was. Right. Um, and, and again, obviously a lot of premises have a reduced capacity at that as well, because they've had to put other measures in. Um, so I, I would say just over three months of, of nothing. Um, and then uh, another maybe three, four weeks of um, reduced capacity. Okay, that, no, that <clears throat> that helps enormously because I was thinking three quarters seemed to be right, but I think having heard that, two thirds is probably closer to correct if if we're, if we're feeling that this is something we can do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Uh, Councillor uh, Greg. Uh, thank you, convener. Um, yes, I I am very supportive of this proposal. Um, in principle, I'm very sympathetic towards towards the businesses, um, and I'm looking at the the two figures were I think fifty six thousand and seventy five thousand um, in in a reduction, and I, I mean I would prefer to be more generous uh, because there are so many businesses that will have suffered, and indeed this kind of concession will will still not be sufficient um, to help. Um, all all businesses, but it will hopefully help to take some of the pressure off of them. Uh, um, I wanted to ask um, a kind of a technical question about the process. It, can we just proceed to make a decision, or do we have to consult with the business? Just what, you know, what's the what's the um, procedure? Uh, absolutely, you can make a decision, councillor. The, um, the the setting of the annual fees is, is the, the the board's responsibility. Um, the act mm -hmm. provides a maximum, yeah. but obviously, as I said, we're, we're we're supposed to try and meet our costs and and, and not more. So, um, basically, the procedure would be if, if you make the decision today as to to what um, percentage you want the um, the annual fee to be of the maximum, uh, we have to submit a basically an annual fee reminder to all premises um, at the end of August. Um, so we would calculate what their amended annual fee is going to be and and, and basically communicate that to, to all the premises. Right, thank you. I, I mean, I, I just had the impression that the 75,000 reduction seemed seemed the fairer. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Councillor McClellan. Yeah, thank you, Convener. <clears throat> Obviously, I support this um, and I think it's very <clears throat> fine that we do this. Um, in fact, Mr. Monroe, for the the work that's gone into this, um, uh, you know, I'd be happy with I think either option. Um, although, uh, and I think it's, it's useful to know as well that we we can cover this by our own uh, budget as such in, in our reserves. So um, there won't necessarily be a knock-on effect to the to the wider council budget. Um, so it is welcome, I'm sure, and we should pass on that um, saving to the, the traders. Um, I think that would be welcomed by them as well. Okay, thanks, Councillor McLean. Councillor Grant. 
Thank you, uh, convener. I've been quite quiet today, but I just thought I would uh, echo some of the comments that have uh, been made. Um, uh, I would prefer, um, uh, as uh, Councillor Cameron has indicated, uh, being more generous and less generous if we can. To an extent, you know, for for many, it will be a symbolic, um, but an important uh, symbolic um, signal from the board that uh, it recognises the challenges that um, you know, they they all face, but. I, I know it's been mentioned by others, at, you know, earlier on in the session, but I think it, you know, it's important um, for me as an individual to say as well, um, you know, businesses aren't shying away from the unprecedented challenges that they face. That are, you know, they're they're working very, very hard to, you know, to get things moving and to, um, you know, um, make sure that their businesses uh, survive through the the difficult periods. So I do think that, you know, this would go some way to to recognising the you know the fantastic work that they are doing to, you know, keep keep people in jobs and keep the the city uh, uh, going as, as best it can. So I I would like to be more generous than than less. Thank you very much, Councillor Grant. Um, I, I noticed Councillor McClellan and Cameron still got their hands up, but I'm assuming that was from their last comments. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um. And I don't see any other hands. So what I would suggest is that we put on an additional recommendation which authorises the clerk to go to the two thirds um, of, of the annual fee. So that will see a reduction roughly of 30 uh, of a third for premises um, on sales only. Um, and that we obviously keep the figures under review as we move forward. I think, you know, we've heard a lot from everybody today and, you know, we have to recognise it's not just the loss of income that these premises have had to incur, but there's also the cost of um, putting in PPE and um, other measures to keep their patrons safe. So there has been a lot of expenditure on them as well as uh, as loss of income. And I think, Councillor Grant, you're quite right. We want to see these businesses thrive and, and survive because they're good for the economy, they're good for the city, both in, in terms of the residents, but also for tourists coming into the city. They're an indication of a, of a healthy city because they don't just provide alcohol, they also provide food, they provide jobs, they provide a lot of other um, opportunities in the city. So I think if we can do something which will make their journey into 2021 a little bit easier um, by uh, uh, whether it seems symbolic or otherwise, you know, to say that we're there to support them. And I think this reduction will be gratefully received um, because as we know, if we look after the pennies, hopefully the pounds will look after themselves. And I think I would just commend um, again this report. Thank you very much, Mr. Munro and, and to Arlene and Benedict and, and all the rest of them who work very hard to make sure that we get to where we are um, and to be able to produce these reports. So thank you to the officers, but you know, thank you to our premises out there who are fighting tooth and nail to stay in business under some very difficult uh, conditions. Um, and they're doing it not on a shoestring because as I say, we, I've mentioned the cost of PPE um, and all the other extra costs that they've had to incur don't come cheap um, and, and I think they've tried to create a good environment as well as a safe one so you know I'd commend this report and just ask for everyone to agree up to approve the additional recommendation as well as AMB and that's a reduction to two-thirds of the the annual fee can we agree that's okay I'm seeing everyone agreeing excellent thank you folks um, now we've got sorry I'm just grabbing my agenda again it slipped off my page uh, that concludes the, the main items, but um, Mr. Munro, if you could, there is something that we'd like to just draw your attention to, which is not a pleasant thing, but Munro. Yeah, thank you, convener. Um, I just um, to, to, to um, inform the board as much as anything else. Um, most would be aware of um, a Teresa Hunt solicitor from Burness Paul, who's appeared before the board many times um, in uh, applications. Uh, Sadly, she passed away at the weekend. Um, I, uh, I've spoken to somebody at a firm who, who's given me permission to, to, to basically let the board know um, that that was the case. So I, I just thought that um, obviously um, horrible news, but that um, you, you might want to be made aware. Thank you, Mr. Munro. Uh, Theresa and I have, have often sparred both at licensing board and planning. You know, I've known Theresa a long time. And it, it, it gives me great sorrow to hear of her passing, which was very sudden. Um, and, uh, 
you know, our sympathy obviously goes to her family and, and obviously our colleagues at Bernice Paul. And I, I think the wider legal profession will also um, be very sad at her passing because, you know, she's become one of the stalwarts in the city. Um, and I think, you know, I'd just like it to go on record that certainly our condolences come from the board um, and that we're thinking of our um, her family and all of our colleagues who uh, will definitely miss her. Um, and just to thank her for her participation, I'm sure she's listening to somewhere, um, you know, because it was always constructive, um, even if we were on the opposite side of the fence sometimes, but it was her, her input was always welcome and she'll be a, a great loss to us all. So thank you for letting us know that, Mr. Munro. Um, now that concludes the recorded part of the session. If I could ask members just to stay on after, I'll thank Inspector um, Campbell, he, you can escape. Um, if I could ask Arlene to cease the recording. Thank you. Bye. Bye.